This is the human reality behind the immigration story. Life as a migrant in Cali has never been tougher. Hundreds of police have cleared out illegal migrants from a camp. The migrants had gathered in the makeshift camp hoping to get a chance to cross into Britain. There is evidence of immigrants sleeping rough throughout this city. All of them brought here by the dream of crossing the English Channel. We have to show that we are not afraid of the police and that we know the rights that they have. But one was nice, one was a nice polite man, the other ones were really stupid bastards. If we were not there, they had to take them all. Because what we try to do is every time when there is violence, we try to say this happened in Calais and we know that officially they cannot use any violence against them. It's just a reason to, to make their life miserable. Just to put their life miserable here in Calais. Calais is one big shame. I think it is something is very wrong in Europe. We have to think about ourselves what we are doing because this is not normal. It is not human. I see how they treat people here, how I can be proud. I cannot be proud. I'm very ashamed, very, very ashamed about what happened. Some people don't want to see, and some people see but don't want to do something. See, Calais is not a normal town. Calais is like a war town. It's not a normal town. It is a nice town, it's a beautiful town, but it's not a normal town. Because in this city, more than 500 people live in the street. One year ago was still one law in, in France that say if you take one migrant to your house, you can have one year of prison. If you take a dog to your house, it's okay. So it means a migrant is less than a dog? I wonder. Four years ago, I, I was living in Africa already, but I came for one and a half months back to Europe, and I was one month in Salem. So I always knew that there was some organizations who helped migrants in Calais. Sometimes things cross your road and you want to get involved in it. I was, I'm a comedian, I make theater, I write. I was art director of a big park in Holland and one day one of my French friends told me we go for a holiday in Senegal, come with us. And I said, ah, no, I don't want to go to Africa. I know nothing about Africa. So I was very impressed about what was black Africa. And I start talking on the beach with all those young boys who told me 
Uh, I want to go to Europe, I want to go to Europe, I want to go to Europe. And that's how I get involved with Africa and with the dream of Europe. You know, for me, I was never meant to, to write something about illegal immigrants because that was not my job. I was just making theater pieces and playing theater, that's my job. But when you live in Africa and when you see so many people die every day, every day, because they go in boats uh, to Europe and many of die or die in the desert of Libya, and it became my life. So for me now, I can only do one thing. If I want to make theater, I will write about the dream of Europe. And if I want to write something, I have to write about the dream of Europe. I have no choice. This is my life also. If nobody helps you, it doesn't matter if you die. I talk a lot with migrants and most of the time they said to me, if I die tomorrow it's okay, then at least I tried to have a better life. I have nothing to lose, I lost everything. I lost my parents, I lost my country, I lost my human rights. If I lost my life, it's the last thing that left. For many of them, they know that. They know their life is dangerous. They know what they do is very dangerous every night. They know they risk their life. They all know it, but they have... What, what is the option? I ask you, what, what, is, what can they do? Even this morning, I talked with some of the boys. They just came back from the trucks. They said, ah, oh, the police was very violent. And they were, like, depressed. And then I said, no, come on, you have to believe in it. You have to believe one day will be better. And they say, if I don't believe in that, I better finish my life now. This is Calais. It is geography, yes? Calais is here, Duvre is there. They, they don't go, never. Even if they can destroy all the camps, they can destroy all the tents. They will be still here. So if they destroy everything, they just make everybody miserable. And the one who will suffer the most are, are the migrants, because they have nothing. So if we cannot help them, it is finished. What they say, those people are no criminals. They just try to find a good life. They have the same age as you. They have the same rights as you. You were lucky you were born in England. They were born in Ethiopia. They didn't ask for it. If there are no organizations like Salam, the, the city of Calais has to do something. Then it is obligation that the mayor has to decide that they will give them food. Otherwise, people break up shops and people will steal and people will... What will you do if you have no food? C'est pas normal de voir des ghettos et la misère au pas de sa porte. On a peut-être des fois honte d'avoir des choses et puis de se dire qu'on est égoïste parce qu'on veut toujours plus alors qu'on se rend pas compte à côté de nous qu'il y en a qui meurent de faim, qui meurent de froid dans un pays qui se dit, euh, au XXIe siècle, hein, dans un pays qui se dit très, très accueillant. Non, j'ai pas du tout vu. C'est pour moi, c'était des gens qui fuyaient leur pays parce que bah, ils avaient, ils devaient fuir leur pays parce qu'il y a la guerre. Mais sinon, pour moi, c'était normal quoi qu'ils sont là. Et je finirai sur un dernier mot. L'Europe, normalement, est le pays où il y a le respect des droits de l'homme. I 
I was always very proud to be a European, but now I'm black. But you cannot see, but I'm black. My eyes are open, I, I, I'm not blind. I was in Africa, I see what happened in Africa. I see how they treat people here, how I can be proud. I cannot be proud. This is not a zoo. They are not animals. They didn't choose to live like this. I think we have to be very, very ashamed about ourselves. Very.